Welcome, everybody. We are here with another interview, and we have an actual legend in the making. She has been all over the country wrestling. She's won championships from multiple organizations. She has even wrestled on Ring of Honor, put up a great fight against the women's champion, Athena. We'll get into all that soon. And she is local to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Y'all give it up. For the one and only Maya World, Maya, how you feeling? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm fantabulous. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm just uh, excited to get a chance to talk to you. I know we've been talking about doing this forever. <laughs> right. So, uh, how how are you feeling right now? What's what's going on in your world? I'm good. I just you know today's been I've been running around. Not even resting related, just running around doing other things. But I'm chilling now. I'm just getting I'm excited for this interview. Excited what we're gonna talk about. Okay, cool, cool. And I, I gotta I gotta ask you, how did you get into wrestling? Like like what what like who inspired you to get into wrestling? Uh, so I always watched wrestling. It was um always something that I just had in the back of my mind. I never knew like how I never knew when I wanted to do it. I just knew I wanted to do it. So I played uh, basketball and I, I, I rode that all the way to college. Um, and then it, it just it just wasn't for me, you know? Um, even though I loved it, I still miss it to this day. It just wasn't for me. So I had a friend. Um, we met over wrestling Twitter, actually. We were both big uh, Sasha Banks fans. And she was coming down to UT Arlington for college. And she was like, I want to train. So if there's something you want to do, then you should come with me. And at first I was like, no, because I was still in school at that time. And then um, and then I left school and then I was like, you know what? Sure, let's try it. So she, the school she was going to go to was DFW All Pro. And they hold like tryouts. Not like try out, I'm going to pick you, but more like try out. Let's see what it's about and then see if you like it and then you can start. So um, yeah, she we went to a tryout September 2021 and then we both loved it, so we started October 2021. DFW All Pro Wrestling, that's the local wrestling organization that's also an academy where they, you know, teach you how to wrestle, ran by the amazing Lugati. I see you, I see you keep looking right there. You, you, you got a bump or bruise from wrestling over it's the weekend. Sore. It just happened last night, so it's still sore, and I keep bumping it. Oh, no, I don't need you to keep bumping. You can't get hurt during the interview, okay? I don't want nobody coming after me. <laughs> no booker no. talking about talking about you made a missed the show or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. Okay. And, and so you 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 ended up going to DFW All Pro tryout. That that I assume went pretty well because you're you're still wrestling. So what what was the next step after doing the tryout? What what happened next after that? Uh after that, we so we started October 2021 and then just for the next like year, so you should, it should be like a year and a half before you wrestle. But um, I think October 21, 2021, I started and I like had a first like goon match, which is like, you're just in a mask, you're not really yourself in like May. So my coach was like, you got it. Like you're catching on to everything fast. You know, we're going to put you out there. I got out there quick, um, even though it wasn't me. I didn't debut as me, like actually Maya until August. So it was about nine months before I actually started wrestling. But um, but yeah, it's just he wants you to make sure you're good. Like he doesn't want to just throw you out there when you're not ready yet. Um, and he believed I was ready five months in. He believed I, I could do at least a little bit. So I'm I, that gave me a lot of confidence when I started like um, in myself. So when I was finally my world, you know, it was it was up from there. Nice, nice. And and uh, when you talking about your coach, you talking about uh, Lou Gotti as the coach. Yes. Yeah, so how how is he? Because I, I he he seems so friendly uh, when when he's the, when he's the uh, the good guy, so to speak. But he's a bad guy. He seems very uh, menacing, right? But he seems so friendly in person. Like, how was he tough on you, trying to make sure that you learned everything, or was it was he still nice? Like, how was that? He was very uh he I mean not very tough, but he was more like encouraging than tough, like he would get annoyed that I wasn't believing in myself because he's like, you know how good you are. Like, you know this and this. Like, so he he was tough at times, but, like, in a good way. Um, very, uh, like, if he was strict, it's because we needed it. Like, don't do this and don't do that because he just, he's been doing it for 20 years. Like, he knows best, basically. 
but um, he, he wasn't too tough. He was he was a, he was very nice, I'd say. But from what I heard, he was more nicer to us than he was the ones who came before us. So they say he softened up a little bit, but I don't know. Don't ask me. I don't <laughs> Not you saying he's soft enough a little bit. He ain't gonna like hearing that. <laughs> but but you started wrestling nine months after training, and I, I kind of went down your resume. Now, obviously, I can't see the entire list, but I've seen you fought. Uh, you've been in the ring with wrestlers such as Holiday, uh, Mia Friday, the Bailey fan, Easy Marino, Alejandro the Lion, Jasmine the Lure, your, one of your best friends, London Dior, mm -hmm. <laughs> Queen Aminata. <laughs> you ain't gonna look like that now. Uh, Janai Kai, and then we obviously got to talk about the match uh, at Ring of Honor where you fought Athena, and you put up a great fight, and the internet had this viral reaction to a photo you posted. Mm -hmm. How did how did that come about? It was it was about you know it was a little inappropriate, but I wanted to get it on the trend, so I was like, let me just post this photo. It happened to be the one with Athena, so yeah, it did go a little viral, and it made my gear sell very well. So I was excited about that actually. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> and uh, for those of you that don't know, the, the the picture went viral because it was it was a shot, and let's just say the shorts were rising up, <laughs> and, and and of course you know the the wrestling fans are like, hey, great job! You know we're very very proud of you. And then of course you had the people that were like, hey, um, we yeah. see something, and it's kind of it's yeah. kind of interesting that that I'm bringing this up because we just had something happen. Uh, I think. Uh, over the weekend or something like that, where Sky Blue had an incident where a fan was ringside yelling very perverted stuff, things that wrestling fans should not be saying. I mean, really, anybody should be saying to a woman, period. And uh, just just being in being a woman in wrestling, like how how do you combat those type of reactions from fans or those uh, perverted fans? Like how do you? Combat it in the sense of not like going to fight them, but not letting it get to you. Still pushing forward and doing what you do. Um, I do hear it a lot. I tend to just ignore it because it's usually like at bar shows. Like drunk fans are going to be drunk fans, and it's annoying to hear and it's stupid because Sky Blue is a really really good wrestler, and I don't know what they were exactly yelling, but it was inappropriate anyways. Um, it's just something I I wouldn't say I have to ignore it. Something that. It shouldn't be said, obviously, but for me, the way I get through it is just ignoring it because, I mean, they're never going to touch me, and if they do, I'll just punch them. But um, for Sky, I mean, I knew she was very upset about it, and I'm glad, like, uh, Aubrey stepped in and got that guy thrown out, even though he had a kid with him. Like, it was just, it was just crazy. Uh -huh. And then there was a whole discourse about, like, women should not try to show their ass, but sometimes... Sometimes they just ride up. You're not worried about them when you're wrestling. You're just out there wrestling. So e either way, women can show whatever they want to show. It's their bodies. But but yeah, it's just it's just dumb. It's just stupid stuff like that. It's so annoying. But just ignore it. That's all I got to say. Right. Nice. And and I definitely agree. It, it sucks you have to even go through that. And obviously, you get to ignore it. And one one of the things I, I was thinking about before we hit the interview is it's crazy how far women's wrestling has come because I, I started really getting into women's wrestling like the early, I mean, the late 1990s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. which we know that was the so-called TNA era uh, where mm -hmm. all the women were was basically eye candy. And then we went through the uh, revolution where uh, Nikki Bella and a couple other women were were pushing like, hey, we can actually wrestle. And and it used to be uh, women's match come on, two women come on string, you'd be like, all right, bathroom break time. That's what people would say. I never said that. I, I actually watched. Mm -hmm. but But people would say, bathroom break and now two women come on the screen they're like yo this is about to be a fire match like how does it feel to be part of that generation now where you don't have to worry about people only looking at tna as they say they're actually looking at wrestling skills and charisma and microphone skills and things like that how's it feel to be part of that generation i feel like that's one of the reasons i stopped like i didn't want to be a wrestler at first it's because they really didn't care about the women and um, I mean, they did a little bit. Like, it was some fans who were like, wow, they're like good. And then other fans who were, and it was like a majority of fans who were like, oh, they're just 
eye candy. But like, yeah, that's that's kind of that era. I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. I just I love watching it though. Um, but yeah, like that that revolution era with um, four horse women of NXT, and then obviously Nikki, the Bellas, Alicia Fox, Paige, Naomi, Tavina. That was that was basically when I got well, I kind of got back into it in 2015 because I came back for Sasha Banks. I, that was my girl. Still to this day, that's my girl. And um, that's kind of when I got back into it. And then when I seen Sasha, I was like, okay, like they out here doing their thing. She looks good. She has a swagger to her, and she's a good wrestler. And I was like, I want to do that. Like now, I want to now I want to do this. So yeah, I, I mean, I love it now. Like we're still fighting for certain small things all over the world. Like not being seen as intergender match when we wrestle men, just being seen as a match and stuff like that. But I'm excited because now it's just um, getting people excited to see your match because they know you're a good athlete and that you're going to put on a good match more so than, oh, I'm going to go to the bathroom or they're just two pretty girls about to fight. So I'm excited that they get to see me for me as a wrestler. That's exciting. Yeah, and and I like the fact that you brought up Sasha Banks uh, being one of your your favorites, and we've seen her. It's it's kind of cool. You wrestled at Ring of Honor, which is owned by All Elite Wrestling AEW, which also employs Mercedes Monet, who is used to be known as Sasha Banks. Are you anticipating yeah. a match against Sasha one day? I mean, that's probably like my ultimate match. Like I could retire that match. I'm not though, but like that's the ultimate. That's the number one goal. Either that or like WrestleMania, obviously, but that's definitely the one goal of mine. I'm excited to be back at AEW because this time she'll be backstage, so I'll probably get to see her and meet her again. But, but yeah, definitely anticipating me versus Mercedes. I'm very excited for that. Okay. Hopefully, it happens. Okay, and you said you're you're gonna see her at an upcoming AEW show. That that's the plan. That's the plan. Hopefully, I don't know if she'll be in her own locker room separated, but if she's walking around and I see her, I might give her a little one. I'm gonna try to talk to him. Just know that uh, I am gonna be geeking out when I see the photo. I'm, I'm already claiming you're gonna get the photo, maybe some video with her, and everything. Yeah, I hope. That, I remember when they came to so 2022 when it was Dallas Mania. I went to like a meet and greet and I met her. I don't know if she remembered me from then. Probably not. She met like a, a lot of fans that day, but um. I told her I'm gonna be wrestling, so hopefully she remembers me. But if she don't, I won't put it against her. She's a very busy girl. But yeah, hopefully we get a picture. Hopefully. Yeah, that'll be cool. And and I wanted to uh ask you, you you've been wrestling for a while now, but I want to know what what do you do outside of wrestling? Like like obviously wrestling is a majority of your life because you're always training. There's no such thing as uh an off day, so to speak, in wrestling. But what do you do like to wind down? Or uh, what do you do to just to have fun? I mean, I like going out, obviously. I love like Top golf. I love go karting. I love clubbing with my sisters. Um, I I feel like hobby wise, wrestling kind of overtook all my hobbies that I had. Like I have hobbies in wrestling now, like video editing or like designing things, which I'm not good at yet. I'm just you know it's like a hobby. But those are like hobbies that I have, but they're still involved in wrestling. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm like I'm just your average 21 year old out here in these streets, just having fun, living my life. Just happened to be a full time wrestler, also. That's very busy with that. But still, you know, especially when like in Philly, like I had a lot of fun besides the wrestling part. I just don't show it a lot on social media, but yeah. Okay. And and I know you're getting ready to go to the Dallas Wings game later tonight. Mm -hmm. And just seeing the explosion of women's basketball lately with with the South Carolina team, the Iowa team, the LSU teams, and all the other uh, players to make up make up uh, the WNBA and everything. Like, how does it feel to see? Because it's like we saw a revolution with women's wrestling. Now we're seeing a revolution with women's basketball. So now you're part of like two huge re women's revolution within sports. Like, how how does it? feel to be like like you're part of that generation part of that history making generation it was i'm so excited that women's basketball is getting more of a global scale i knew i didn't know it was going to just take two crazy um what's the word just generationally talented athletes to do it like caitlin clark and angel reese who i think is really the most 
most of the reason, but Kayla Clark, you know, she's obviously doing her thing out here too. Um, but Angel, just seeing Angel and the love and the hate also, but the love she's getting and they're, they, they basically changed the WNBA. So I'm excited for this season. I'm excited to see the change. I know they already started like the new charter flights, but I'm just excited to see what else they do. Cause I just seen a tweet that was like the first three games. I forgot what the teams were. They like all, all sold out. Um, for their first preseason opener or pre for their season opener. And we're probably gonna get a sellout in Dallas today too because we're playing the sky with Angel Reese. So I'm so excited. I'm, I'm glad for those women because they definitely deserve that. <clears throat> and not having to go overseas just to get money to make ends meet. So hopefully that changes. They can just stay here and just do their thing here. Yeah, and I, I wanted to go to the Chicago Sky game, but I couldn't, my, my, like, whatever reason, the site wouldn't let me pay for the ticket. I was so hurt. I cried in the car, but it's fine. <laughs> but uh, uh, one of the things I did want to ask you, you, you mentioned you're designing your own stuff. You're doing all, pretty much most of your hobbies are within wrestling. So how did you end up getting inspiration for new ring gear or even just new merch? I love seeing, like, um, Megan, Megan Thee Stallion, I love her outfits because everybody always jokes that they look like wrestling gear, but they really do. Like, and I'll, if I see something, I'm like, oh, shoot, that's cool. I'll get, I'll like send them a picture and I'm like, help me design something that's different from this, but kind of like, this is just some inspiration idea I want. Um, a lot of my first gears, they were inspired by wrestlers, like people who, well, not wrestlers, there was this one. I had my, the blue one that sold really well. That one was inspired by, like, my favorite Mercedes or Sasha Banks gear um, from, like, 2015, and I loved it so much, and it stood, stood with me till 2022, and I was like, this got to be my first gear. So, yeah, um, that one was that, and then everything else, yeah, I just see basically pop culture. A lot of the women, what they wear, and it's basically artists, what they wear at their, like, um, concerts and stuff. Like, I just seen Nicki Minaj. She had a really cute outfit on. And I was like, oh, I'm going to get that inspired by gear. And, like, Beyonce. So it's always, like, pop culture or Sasha Banks. Yeah, that's uh, very interesting you brought up Megan Thee Stallion because Megan Thee Stallion has, has been a very influential woman to a lot of people. And <laughs> to see that you get inspiration from her is really cool. And you mm -hmm. also brought up uh, Nicki Minaj. Are there any other, like, rappers that you kind of gravitate to or are those, your, like, your two favorites? Um, I do love them. I love a lot of female rappers. Like, I love Lotto. Uh, I love her music, but I also love her outfits. I Spice always has cute outfits that I definitely, I think one of them I actually screenshotted to send to the gear designer to be like, make you something inspired by this. Um, I love Mona Leo. Um, who else? There's a few others I can't think right now, but definitely Megan and uh, Nikki are probably my top two. Okay. And I, I definitely want to shift back a little bit to wrestling. Um, one of the things I was thinking about is I know uh, you're, you're 21. Mia Friday is, I think, like 17, 18. Then you have London Dior, who is also like, I think, 20 or something like that. We have a lot of younger women wrestlers who are just literally, it, it seems like you guys just hit the scene and you guys are just amazing wrestlers off the top. Like, how how are you guys able to, How how is it that the younger wrestlers are able to come in a lot quicker and be better so quicker because I remember you used, used to have to do the indie circuit for like five years before you consider good. Now, now you guys are winning championships. You're fighting against some of the vets and the vets are like, Oh my God, you're so good. Like how, how do you guys, I guess in a sense, come out so talented so quickly or quicker than we, than we had wrestlers in the past. Um, I feel like it's this, it's like what I said with Lou Gotti, with my coach. It's this sense of like putting people out when they're ready and not rushing them out. A lot of people have said, um, a lot of people who are really good now have said like they weren't they weren't able to like simmer and and just train. They kind of were pushed out there really early on. And um, yeah, like I said, with our coach, it was kind of like the same. Um, like, but yeah, like, yeah. London's twenty three, twenty three. I'm 21. Mia's, I think Mia's 19 now. Um, we have like Amy Macho, who's also young. MJ Santana, who's out right now, but she's really good. When she comes back, you're gonna love her. I think if you just haven't seen her already, she's really good. And we're all like in that around the same age range. So I'm excited to like 
come up with those girls because there's girls I see today who are like some are signed, some are like not, but I see them backstage as extras and they they're on the same age, but they all came up together. And I feel like that's gonna be like us in a few years. We're all gonna be signed and doing our thing, and it's like it's cool because we all came up together. Um, but but yeah, it was just a sense of wanting to be good, and we're, some of us are very athletic. Our coach just he let us he let us, he pushed us out when he thought we were ready, and not pushed us out too early. So. I'm glad he did that because there was a time in my training, probably like two months in, I'm thinking, oh, I'm so good. Like, I got this in the bag. Like, I'm ready to wrestle on the show tomorrow. Like, put me out there, coach. And I was not ready. So I'm glad he waited a little bit and was like, no, you got to, you know, you got to cook a little bit more and then we'll put you out there. But yeah, it's all Lugati. Lugati is, I feel like he's like the best trainer out there. And in the sense of that, he'll tell me things and then I go to train at other schools and like they're they're just now telling their students that you know like he told us so much and gave us so much knowledge early on, and so someone like me, I was like for the longest time I was the only one at my school who was going like four days a week. So Monday and Wednesday is like beginners, and then intermediate, and then Tuesday and Thursday is like advanced and graduates. So there's two different classes, and I whenever I got to advanced and graduates, I was going four days a week, and I was just getting so much knowledge from him, getting so many reps. And just so much knowledge from him every day. And I feel like I learned so, so much. So, yeah, I'm just glad he put me out there when he believed I was ready. Okay. Yeah, thank you for correcting me on the ages. I, I was I was close. But <laughs> thank you so well, much. Was close. I was just I was just putting him out there, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I and I do I like what you said about coming up together because that reminds me when you were talking about that, it just reminded me old NST when you had uh Charlotte. Becky, Sasha, and Bailey, all of them coming up together. So that that's what that reminded me of. And I was just sitting there like, yeah. I, I don't know if you saw like a little smile came across my face because I was just sitting there thinking like, man, we're literally watching the new, I guess you can say four horsewomen or five. I don't know how many it was. But mm-hmm. We're watching the new horsewoman era happen right right there. And and you also talk about Lugati being very supportive and not just throwing you to the wolves because that's, Let's just be honest. That's what some people do. They throw them to the wolves, be like, hey, we'll see if they sink or swim. And obviously, mm-hmm. you definitely swam. And I want to just ask you about your support system. Like, how like, how are the – like, who who around you supports you a lot? Like, to be like – because I know you have bad days. Everybody has bad days where you're like, okay, you know, I bossed that move. Or, or man, I didn't feel like I got the crowd reaction I should have got. How did your support system keep you afloat? And uh, who 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 is part of your support system? Um, my two sisters, whenever I first started, they came to like every show, every show, no matter what. They were all in the Dallas area um, until I graduated. Then I started traveling outside, but they've come to every show. So definitely them. Um, my sisters, they they knew I loved wrestling. They knew I watched wrestling, but they were like, I never, I still never thought you were going to be a wrestler. And I would like force them to like watch watch Raw and stuff with me. I remember vividly what making them watch Sasha and Charlotte made a bit in a Raw in like twenty sixteen. Um, so they're very they were very excited that I started and they're still very supportive. They share all my stuff, they buy all my merch. Um, other than them, uh, my friend Alexi, I'll call her Alexi. She's a wrestler also. Um, she is very supportive. Whenever I first started, she wasn't wrestling yet, she was still training, and I was having a lot of doubts. When I first started, I was having a lot of doubts. I'm like, dang, I wanted to be good. I was pushing myself really hard. So she was one of the ones who was like, what are you talking about? Like, you're you're so good. You're one of the best. <clears throat> you're one of the best and you just started. She really encouraged me and gave me a lot of confidence early on when I wasn't confident myself. And then uh, another friend, LBJ, um, we always support each other. Like I said, when I was coming four days a week, he when he moved up, he started coming four days a week. And we were always together. And... We, we support each other. We're really tight. Um, obviously, my coach and then a few other people who are like not even in Texas. We we always lift each other up. My friend, um, Jocelyn Navarro, who's in Ohio, and then Jada Stone. We have a group chat. We call ourselves the Little Big Three. And because some promoter who is a really high, highly regarded promoter was like, those three were really good. I was watching them the whole match. And he was like, they, they're like the Little Big Three. So we started calling ourselves that. But those are some other girls who like are really... I'm really close to and they we just lift each other up. So I have a high, I've had a lot of support, thankfully. Um, not a lot of negativity yet. Hopefully never, but but it's been good so far. That's good. I, I definitely think a support system is needed, especially in such a 
tough industry where mm-hmm. the expectations are high. And I'm glad glad you have that that nice, well rounded support system, not just wrestlers, people outside of wrestling as well. And I yeah. I, I definitely gotta ask you though, cause cause I remember when uh the last show I went to, because I know we didn't go to the one this past Friday, but the one in April, I, I was talking to you after the show, and you were like, "Yeah, I'm about to get ready to travel." You had your suitcase and everything, and you're, mm-hmm. you're you're always traveling. Like, so how? I've always wondered as a wrestler, especially independent wrestler, you're you're traveling everywhere. How do you even allow your time, your body time to rest? And two, like, how how do you deal with traveling all the time? Because it's not just like you're only wrestling in Dallas. Sometimes you're in Houston. Sometimes you're in LA. Sometimes you're in Philly. You know, you're everywhere, right? So how do you manage that traveling and as well allowing your body to rest? Um, Usually I take one day to rest. It's it's bad, but I take one day to rest. And it's usually Wednesdays, which is a day like I rest, I recover, but I also do like podcasts or I always come up on this day to make sure like I have that one day. But um, but yeah, I, I just take this day to rest. I do everything I need to do to recover. Um, earlier when I was out, I was doing some things, but I also went to this like little massage place and it helped a little bit. I I've been talking to someone because I need like a recovery. They told me I need a recovery. Um, uh, what's the word? Routine, recovery routine. That's what they said. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna start that. But usually it's just just doing, just going, 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 which my body is young right now, but like it's going to catch up eventually. So I'm trying to get that routine started, but yeah, like traveling and it's, and it's not even the traveling. It's not even the wrestling. The wrestling obviously hurts. Sometimes things can go wrong. Sometimes it's okay. It's going to hurt, obviously, but you're kind of immune to it, but really it's the traveling that makes, that wears your body down and just sitting on the seats, like having to sit in the airport for long periods of time. Sometimes you have layovers, sometimes you have delayed flights. That's really what, what hurts your body more. Um, but it's been, it's been, I've only had probably one weekend where I was like, oh my God, I don't, know, I don't think I can do this. And I couldn't make it to my show on Sunday because I was everywhere. Like I went from um, Dallas to LA to North Carolina and I had a show back in Dallas on that Sunday. And I was like, oh my gosh, my body is, it's, it was cooked. But I still went to that show, but uh, that was probably the one weekend that was the worst. But also, I also hate the weekends where I'm like, I have a weekend off and I'm not wrestling and it's the worst. So I know, I think I would rather have those weekends where I, I'm everywhere anyways. But yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to start a recovery routine soon and hopefully like, you know, then I'll be good. Nice. Just definitely start that recovery routine. You definitely want you to stay resting as long as you can, to stay healthy as long as you can as well. And that's, that's crazy. You said you went from Dallas to L.A. to North Carolina and back to Dallas. That's I've been to all of those spots. That is not an easy trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I, I've talked about it. Uh, spoke like briefly about Philly WrestleMania weekend. I heard you did amazing. I wasn't there, so I, I couldn't see it. But people online were, were were raving about your performances. Like to be able to be in the same city as WrestleMania, not just viewing WrestleMania, but actually wrestling at WrestleMania. And I, I think I even saw you go to like uh, some of the other festivities. Like to go from being someone who just watched wrestling, you think. Uh, you just started watching wrestling. Then you trained in wrestling. Now you're wrestling at WrestleMania weekend, not at WrestleMania, but during WrestleMania weekend, where you know WWE has scouts everywhere during those shows. How does it feel to get a chance to at least be in front of those scouts, prove your abilities, and and, and come back with rave reviews? Um, I was I was really excited how my first Mania weekend went. Um, I didn't. I went in with two bookings I think and I came out with like four so I was just you know that's that's the weekend where you never know what can happen so just be prepared for anything um I knew that for the culture that was something I wanted to be on as soon as I like found out about it I think I found out about it the first year I started wrestling when they came to Dallas um and and then I think honestly I think Christian Casanova who was Carmelo Hayes I think he was on that first that for the culture in Dallas so I I knew I always wanted to be um on there and then I got the opportunity to work Spark Joshi Pro with Mayu Watani who like who is 
probably someone I never ever thought I would wrestle. Um, I was really excited for that. Also, what else did I have? All Caribbean Wrestling, which is a, a show that goes to like the Bahamas and everywhere. So I'm working with them more in the future. So I'm excited for that. Um, I just had to, I was actually really like nervous going into that weekend because I knew there was going to be so many people there. So everybody who was, who was anybody on the indies was going to be there. So I just, I was nervous, but it was more like an exciting nervousness because I knew it could be, my life could either change or I could just do bad. But I had a lot of confidence. I just knew I, I had to perform good. And I did most, most, mostly all the matches, basically all the matches. I did what I needed to do. And um, a lot of people, they, they liked what I did. So I've gotten a lot of opportunities from that weekend. So I'm excited. I was really excited about it. Yeah, congratulations on a great uh indie wrestling weekend at wrestlemania because i know that's like one of the biggest like you said everybody who's anybody's going to be there not just mm-hmm. in the indie game but anybody from wrestling fans to executives and everything so kudos to you for the, uh killing it like I, I was i was just at home you know i was like man i wish i could be there i was just a big smile on my face uh looking mm-hmm. at the clips and everything and uh definitely remember the for the culture show in dallas that was that was my first time seeing two black people do a death match and it freaked me out <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll never forget he hit him with the light bulb and the bulb came at us. And I was like, oh, this is this is real. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I do I, I do like when you said uh you came in with two bookings and you left with four. Like mm-hmm. you you literally had uh I forget what they say, I forget how they word it, but they're like uh always have your gear in your bag because you never you oh, just yeah. never know. <laughs> so you never know. So kudos to you. And I got to ask you, what, what's next for Maya World? I know you have some bookings or something coming up. So uh, you want to plug it, feel free. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually excited because I finally get a rematch with Athena. And I wanted it to be, I wish it could have been on Ring of Honor, but it's going to be here in the Dallas area at MPX or Metroplex, Metroplex Wrestling. Um, it's at the Epic in Grand Prairie, actually. Um, I'm going to get a rematch with Athena, got to get her back for that cheap shot she gave me after the match. Um, so, so excited for that. Like when I when I found out about it, I told everybody. I was so excited. Um, this Saturday I'm gonna be in uh, San Francisco at West Coast Pro, which is one of the most elite wrestling shows on the West Coast. So very excited for that. Also, um, I have a, a few other ones that haven't been announced yet that I'm really excited about that are coming up. So just stay tuned for those. And and yeah, just keep watching. Just. Watch my Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and I'll be announcing more. Okay, cool. And uh, let, let me just ask this. Anything else you want to add about who Maya World is and why people should be a fan? Um, Someone who's going to show up, show out, no matter what show I'm on. Um, so, yeah. That's that's about it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> that that is true. No matter what, you show up and you show out, and you even showed out for this interview. And I definitely appreciate you taking the time to do the interview. I know we've been back and forth trying to figure it out, but we got it figured out. Really excited to uh, share share with the world what you got coming up, and I can't wait for the world to see more of your talent more of your greatness because i know I'm, I'm claiming that you're gonna be one of the top wrestlers when it's all said and done because you are definitely amazing and i'm glad to be a fan i know i'm like geeking right now but <laughs> glad to be a fan no. of yours <laughs> thank you thank you so much all right no problem but guys make sure you like and subscribe to this video see more interviews and shout out to my world all her links and everything will be in the description below so you guys have a great one and we'll see you later